All right, continuing with refining the edges of the head, just so we can see what comes later. It is this layer we're erasing from. I want to select the empty space around it with the magic wand. Hmm. Keep selecting the wrong layer for me. It needs to be layer three. Come on, select it. There we go. Now, if I select the empty space around that layer, it should give me, there we go, the little marquee. And because I have a four pixel feather, it's going to cut away at it. But watch what I can also do. I can hold down shift and add the green to that, this background green. And now with that feather, I cut it and it will get rid of all that green for me. I can even try adding these pinks, but when it gets to multiple colors, you see how it starts to, to select more than I want it to select. So that's when I might just use it as a mask, then use my soft edge to 100% eraser. And start erasing away. So using selections as masks can, can just be really, really, really helpful to what we're doing here. And you can see how that's those white ears are now nicely cut out in most places. And then where they're not, I just go in with my 100% soft edged eraser. And I can get them that way. Now, I do want to make sure I didn't erase something I didn't want to erase, right? When I just hit delete. So I'm going to go back in my history to where I hit clear. And I think I did lose some stuff in here that I didn't want to lose. Well, maybe not. Huh? I think I'm good. Okay. So let's clean up these little remnants with my 100% soft edged eraser. From all these different layers. And next, it's gonna be the horns. Now the horns have that nice blue sky behind them but now I have that little halo of blue around them. So to get that to go away, what do I do? I'm going to use that four pixel feather, select the empty space, and hit delete. This will bite away at it, but then I can also hold down shift and add a selection of the blue in particular. There we go. And you'll see all that blue just disappear using the magic wand. But if I'm worried that there's blue in the interior, I don't need to hit just delete. I can use my eraser and use the selection as a mask and just delete it from the edge. So you have a lot of control. In this case, I can just hit delete because there isn't any blue in the interior that I want to keep. All right, so last thing, as you reveal and as you cut out edges, you'll see what edges you have and what needs to be refined, like this cat side of the face here. I got to get rid first of that soft edge, 100% eraser that uh, that hard edge that's still there. And then let's see, I guess it's this layer, the mouth, still some hard edges. 
Remember, pressure sensitivity with a tablet really helps. And if you haven't gotten much practice with the tablet yet, it's a good time to get introduced to it before it becomes so uh, important when we do digital painting and digital coloring for selections. So I've got whiskers. making a little variation controlling every pixel and then I'm going to go to a low opacity eraser and just blend the edges of these ears so again less than 40 soft edged and I'm blending soft into soft soft into soft so now I've got a head kind of on a chameleon body or a chameleon neck I'm going to save it command s it's going to update and there it is and now I have to find the spine connection and so I go to my references and I find my chipmunk. So this is a pattern on the back I want to use. So this is just for the spine. So let me move it underneath the head group. Move it out of the head group. <laughs> keep messing this up it's going to move it up and out close up the head group move that to the top and it can help to now lock the head the whole group with the padlock so I can't accidentally mess with it now I take my smart object of this chipmunk back and this is what's handy is I can take the opacity down on it so I can kind of see my sketch kind of see the spine I can use control T in photo P. Come on. Control T. And rotate it, stretch it, warp it, distort it. Just trying to get that spine curve to match. I think I want it maybe about there. And this shows me that maybe I want to make my cat creature a little bit bigger than my sketch. My sketch has a really big head, so I might need to increase my canvas size a little bit. I believe my computer can handle that extra resolution. So I'm going to make it in inches a canvas size of 14. but I need to extend it from the right side. Image, canvas size, growing from this side. I can probably do 13, 13 inches. I'll go 14. Because I want to actually make that tail fluffier as well. So I'm still following the intentions of my sketch. 14.5, there we go. But when I see opportunities for improvement in the anatomy, and in this case, the flow of the neck and the overlap, I'm going to do that. Then I can take it up to 100%. And that's without even warping it or changing it too much. So how do I cut it out? Well, I'm going to select the white space around it. And I have a four pixel feather. I'm curious if that's going to be too much. Because it's quite a bit. That was for the really fluffy hair. So how can I check? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select inverse. So now it's not the white space. It's everything but the white space, but with that feather. And then I hit command J. And then delete the smart object. 
And then I can see, I can turn off the sketch and see on gray. Yeah, so there's, there's plenty of feathering there that I can still do. In fact, I might want to do that right now. Select it. Ah, stay on the right layer for me. Select it. Make sure that feather is there. It's a 15 pixel feather. <laughs> and then delete. You see how it bites away at that white. Except where there's kind of white hairs in the tail. So that's okay. There's also a connection here between the tail and the back. That is not going to help me. So I'm going to sever that with my 100% soft edged eraser. First deselect, Command D, then get in there and fine tune it. Now there's little things I'll need to fix in this that I can do with the clone stamp, like get rid of that ear, transition into other stuff, but we'll get there. All right, and it only really makes sense as the back with my sketch because I have a different kind of front legs and chest. So I'm going to use my 100% big eraser, make it even bigger, pressure sensitive, and I'm going to erase the whole bottom of this. I'll leave the tail for now because that might be helpful. Now I'm going to bring in what I have for my chest, arms, and legs. Which is this red squirrel. And I'm going to scale it. First I'll take its opacity down. And I'm going to put it underneath my back layer, right? And then use Control T to scale so that those leg joints, that shoulder joint matches with my sketch. And that, in this case, means holding down shift and stretching it a little bit taller. And instead of making my life really hard, I can use those back joints as well. And just kind of bend them back to kind of fit with the proportions of the references I already have. I can also help make the back match. But that looks pretty good. Okay, put that up to 100%. So once you have the head figured out, the rest can come together pretty quickly as long as you're observing that anatomy correctly. So what can I get rid of here? Well, I only want this part of the body. So I'm going to just use my lasso and do a rough cut, especially because this is unfortunately not on white, right? So I will have to cut this out more cleanly. And I don't have a back foot, but I'll show you what we can do about that if I want to make them all match. And I don't need the tail, but I'll do just a little bit of it. And then I only want to grab what I need with enough overlap to transition into that back. So I'm going to hit Command J and then delete the smart object. Okay. Now, you can see already a huge difference between the lighting and coloring of these two. So before I go much further, I'm going to take these legs and I'm going to play with their direct adjustments. First with levels, I'm going to brighten up their midtones quite a bit by using that midtone slider. Not so much that I lose pixel content, but there's a lot of content there I wasn't seeing before. It's amazing. You really start using these, these uh, adjustment tools, how much potential there is there. I can limit the highlight just a little bit, limit the shadows just a little bit. Okay, now let's do that same image adjustment levels for the back piece. Oh. 
Image adjustment levels, and I'm going to take that midtones 